Well, this is going live now. South right, yeah. And then if you move your arms or. It's the morning calisthenics. Yeah, we all know about calisthenics. How's the volume in the back? Can you hear? Yeah. Right. Okay. Okay. You are very well. Right. Okay, because, you know.
My name is Helena Webb. I'm the Bishop Warden for this little mission with the Great Big Heart. I just want to say to all of you that with all the pandemic and the stuff that's going on, we have been consistently having people here to worship with us. We have consistently had a priest to be here to do um, Eucharist. Pastor Judy has been with us and will continue to be with us. And I just want you guys to know she has already set up to do Holy Week. So put that on your calendar. If you want to see it, I'm sorry, Kari. <laughs> <laughs> a great Holy Week. Please put on your calendar to be here. It will be important. I just want to advise you that all church activities may be internet and stream live, right? We're going live. We're going live on Facebook. Video recording and photographs for church use. So if you have issues with having your face out in the public, cover them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take yourselves and get ready to worship.
Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weakness of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of the scripture. A reading from Deuteronomy. When you have come into the land that the Lord God is giving you as an inheritance to possess, and you possess it, and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit on the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord your God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest who is in the office at that time and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and set it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power. With signs and wonders, and he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given to you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks to God. God. Let us read Psalm 91 and by hand first. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High Abide in the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold. My, my God, in whom I put my trust. Because you have made Lord your refuge and, and the Most High your habitation, habitation, there shall be no evil happen to you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you. To keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you up in their hands. Let you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the other. You shall, shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he's bound to me in love, therefore I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him. And he shall 
Lord and my salvation. The second reading is from Romans. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and is so justified, and one confesses with the mouth and is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is the Lord of all and is generous to all who call upon him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
us in the meditations of all our hearts to be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Getting in the way this morning. <laughs> um, I'm going to start by telling you a sort of amusing story about temptation. If there is such a thing. Seems like an oxymoron. But anyway. <laughs> um, a few of you were on the last pilgrimage that I went to the Holy Land. All of I know. Anybody else? Well, we went with a group from the uh, cathedral. And um, one of the places that we always stop, uh, just a little bit off uh, Jericho in the Dead Sea, is the Mount of Temptation. And this is a mount that has been identified through archaeological work as potentially and pretty certainly the actual mount where Jesus was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. Now, um, it's a pretty steep hill going up the mountain. Um, and as you know, I have problems with my legs and the oxygenation. Um, so I went part way up. There's like a cable car that goes part way up. And there's a little seating area there with some picnic benches and stuff. And then there's the path that goes up the rest of the way to the cave where there are some monks who um, have icons and all of that and tell the story of the temptation. So having been there, this is my seventh trip to the Holy Land. Mm -hmm. Having been there several times before, I didn't really feel that I needed to Trek all the way up, and um, it's a fairly steep climb. So I decided to just wait where the little cable car left you off. And I would wait for the group to come back down and sit there peacefully, enjoying the, the scenery and the quiet of the desert. Hmm. Except it wasn't very quiet because um, the Entrepreneur, entrepreneurs in the area had set up little booths with all of their wares. It's not called the Mount of Temptation for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I came away with, I think, three pair of earrings, a stole, and um, some other eagles. <laughs> Jesus was a lot better at temptation than I was. But anyway, so here we have the story of Jesus right <coughs> after his baptism in the Jordan River, being led by the Spirit in the wilderness. Now, in some versions, um, some of the Gospels, it says, led by the Spirit to the wilderness. But in Luke, Jesus is led in the wilderness. The Spirit is there with Jesus all through this experience. Okay? Spirit never leaves. But anyhow, Jesus fasts for 40 days and 40 nights. I can't do it for 40 hours. And Jesus was famished. A wonderful word, isn't it? Famished. We talk of famines in the land. We don't usually, say, I mean, we say, oh gosh, I'm really hungry. But we don't often use that word famished. It really has a punch to it. So Jesus was famished. So the devil uses this hunger to tempt Jesus and to challenge Jesus' understanding of who he really is. So here goes the devil. If you are the Son of God, he says, 
Command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Now, the devil is challenging Jesus to grasp authority over the natural world, to defy the laws of nature that claim that a rock is simply a rock, and that bread is bread, but the one is not the other. This is a kind of power over nature that the devil is taunting Jesus to accept, to grasp for himself. This is a kind of power that commands and demands submission. But this is not the kind of power bestowed on Jesus by God through the Spirit. So, how does Jesus respond to this challenge? He says, it is written, one does not live by bread alone. Now that's a famous line. We've all heard that. And there the evangelist Luke stops. One does not live by bread alone. But where it is written comes from Deuteronomy chapter 8, in which Moses is warning the Israelites that their success in overcoming the people of Canaan, into whose land they're going, will tempt them to forget the lessons of their wilderness journey when they were totally dependent on God and God's mercy. Moses says, Remember the long way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness in order to humble you, testing you to know what was in your heart, whether or not you would keep his commandments. He humbled you by letting you hunger, then by feeding you with manna, with which neither you nor your ancestors were acquainted, in order to make you understand that one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So Jesus uses an incomplete quote, according to Luke. Um, why is that? Because in Matthew's version of Jesus' temptation by the temple, Jesus quotes a whole verse about not living by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So, why do you think Luke might leave that out? Any idea? Okay. Um, well, I ask you to consider his audience. Who was Luke addressing that is different from who Matthew was addressing. Matthew was writing his gospel, especially for the Jews who were coming to believe that Jesus actually was the promised Messiah. They were the Christianized Jews. They would have recognized the reference, the reference to not living by bread alone from their Hebrew scriptures, and they would understand the context of this story, um, the Jews being led out of Egypt, this 40 years journey in the wilderness, and God um, providing food for them in the form of manna. But Luke was writing his gospel for a Gentile audience, that is a non-Jewish audience, who would more than likely not have been familiar with the Hebrew scriptures and the Exodus story. They would not have had any cultural history or memory of the 40 years wilderness journey to the Promised Land. So it was enough for Luke to have Jesus respond to the devil that one does not live by bread alone, and let the hearer sort of fill in the blanks. What does he do? Okay, so now in the second temptation, 
The devil offers Jesus authority over all the kingdoms of the world, claiming that it is within his power, that is the devil's power, to grant this, if only Jesus will worship him. Again, Jesus responds with a quotation from scripture, saying, it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. This is, again, the short version of another passage from Deuteronomy, a passage in which Moses exhorts his people to obey his commandments given them by God in preparation for their being led into the land promised them by God. Here it is in Deuteronomy chapter 6, beginning with verse 10. When the Lord your God has brought you into the land that he swore to your, to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give you a land with the large cities that you did not build, houses filled with all sorts of goods that you did not fill, hew cisterns that you did not hew, vineyards and olive groves that you did not plant, and when you have eaten your fill, take care that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. The Lord your God you shall fear, him you shall serve, and by his name alone you shall swear. Okay? So again, the Gentiles were familiar with the Exodus story. Um, those details are not as important to Luke as just that punch of a line. It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve only him. This is again the short version Matthew does the full bit. So then the devil quotes scripture to Jesus. He's tired of having Jesus quote in scripture, so he can quote scripture back to Jesus. He challenges Jesus to throw himself from the pinnacle of the temple in Jerusalem. Quote, for it is written, he will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Where have you heard this? Just this morning. That comes from Psalm 91, which we just read. And there's even a song in our supplemental hymnal, hymnal on the love and praise, number 810. Um, and the third verse of this hymn is an exact quotation from that passage. And thanks to Vladdy, we'll be singing that as our communion hymn this morning. So pay attention to that for the first time. <laughs> So here we have the first gospel lesson, lesson given to us in Lent, essentially telling us that, like Jesus, we need to be strong and faithful against the challenges and temptations of the devil. But it's not always so easy to see the devil behind some of the choices and challenges we encounter in our daily lives, is it? It's not always obvious when we need to hold fast to Jesus, to call on the Holy Spirit to protect and guide us. Sometimes we don't recognize that the seemingly most logical answers to the problems confronting us are really temptations of the devil and that we need to turn to God first, last, and only. And so once again during this season of Lent, I have brought you nails. Do you remember these? Mm -hmm. yeah. And I even included instructions on them. <laughs> um, 
But these are nails that you can carry in your pocket or purse. You can do it in your pocket and carry them to the casino. These nails can symbolize the presence of Jesus. A nail that you can grab hold of whenever you doubt whether you're being tempted by the devil. Or, in contrast, he offers a resolution to your problem by the Holy Spirit. You can say a prayer while holding on to your nail, beseeching God for guidance, for forgiveness, for strength and courage, for grace, for help for yourself or for someone else. I'll have a basket of these nails at the communion rail for you to pick one up as you leave the meeting. And I hope you will use your nail to pray with, to pray on, and to press onto your nail all of those things that you want and need to put onto Jesus. Put all your fears, all your hopes, all your dreams, all those things that you want to and need to confess. Put them onto your nail and give them over to Jesus. Give over to him your burdens, your doubts, Trusting and believing that Jesus will help you find the answer that comes from God. And then on Good Friday, which of course you all will be attending, <laughs> you can bring your nail now heavy with prayer. Bring it back to church. And then they will be raised up with Jesus on the day of the resurrection. Amen. Amen.
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Everyone who calls in the name of the Lord shall be saved. Our oh, generous God hears us when we pray. Therefore, let us pray. Hear us, O oh God. Save us, O oh God. God. You know your church, O oh God. You know that because of fear and greed, we are slow to offer the first fruits of our hearts. Forgive us and come quickly to help us. Hear us, O God. Hear us, O God. You know the hearts of mortals, O God. You know that we are prone to hatred and division. Yet you make no distinctions, but only love. Help us more like you. Forgive us and come quickly to help us. Hear us, O God. Save, Save us, O Lord. You know we are quick to exploit your creation, O God. You know we take the blessings of this life for granted. Forgive us and come quickly to help us. You may add your own petitions and thanksgiving at this time. Hear us, O God. Save, Save us, O God. Lord. You know our temptations, O God. You know we are not as strong as you think we are. Give us your strength. Forgive us and come quickly and help us. Hear us, O God. Save us, O God. You know weaknesses, O God. You know we struggle in our pain. We suffer and experience trouble. Forgive us and come quickly and help us. We pray for all those who are the St. Peter's and the daughters of the King. Prayers. You know their weaknesses, their strengths, their failings. Whatever their needs are, God, you know who they are, you know where they are. We pray for help. In you, O oh God, we put our trust. We entrust to you our dead because you alone are our refuge and salvation. You alone are mighty to save. Hear us, O God. Praise Praise us, o God. Lord. Help us to honor the knowledge of our indigenous neighbors, to listen through them to your call, to renew the life of the earth, and to live together as your people. Lord, have mercy. Hear our prayer. The Diocese of Arizona Cycle of Prayer, we pray for Iglesia Episcopal de San Pablo, Phoenix, Arizona. Following me, an eternal dog, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now let us confess our sins against God and our enemies. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Now the peace of the Lord be always with you. And now the peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace be with you. Peace, 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 I know Judy and David went right along with that Judy when she talked about the home temptation. We were there. It was a feeling that you never, ever, ever forget, even if you've only been there one time. So, and we were all tempted. We did the same thing we did. Well, we that down. <laughs> so, I almost worked on the hearing for that. <laughs> so thank you for blessing us and for the service that you bring to us so great. We are learning through this process. The good news is that the BC will be getting together on Tuesday to look at the resume and for a new year. So one of the things we didn't put in the prayers of the people Let's continue to pray for a discernment that once we go through the paperwork and do an interview, we should have a vicar this year. So we need to keep praying and thank God for where we are. So that was something that should have been in the prayer. That wasn't in the prayer. We invite you to continue to follow us on Tuesday evening for evening prayer at 6 p.m. online. Thursday for Complain 6 p online at www.stpetersepiscopalcg.org. Follow us there on, on Sundays. We have in service, in person, and online service. So continue to follow us. That is my announcement, and I see Karen and Kari, so I will get out today. <laughs> I just want to remind everyone on the outreach committee that we have a meeting on Tuesday at 10 o'clock in Burton Hall, and anyone is welcome to join us. Good morning. Good morning. Um, I wanted to say thank you to David, our webmaster, who has updated our website. So if you go to the website, there's a link that will take you directly to Facebook where we are doing our service live now on Facebook every Sunday. And then later on, it will be uploaded to YouTube on Mondays, in case YouTube is easier for you, but that will be posted on Mondays. So thank you, David, so much for making all of that happen. Um, second thing is I have another opportunity. <laughs> you guys love it when I have opportunities for you. Um, so something I have been coordinating is an activities group um, Pre-pandemic, it was very active, obviously. Uh, Post-pandemic, however, we're still kind of getting up to speed. But um, I'm going to be facilitating the activities that we planned for this year, but that will be the end of my reign in that position. So we have an opportunity. If you would like to coordinate this activities group in the future, I'm happy to show you the ropes. 
previous activity co uh, coordinator was uh, Joni, and <laughs> she did a fabulous job. She had really good issues to fill. Um, so she's also a wonderful guide and idea person for that. And so if you'd like to coordinate activities for church people uh, outside of services in the future, please let me know. And so like I said, I'll be coordinating the activities that are planned for this year, but then starting like in the fall when we should start up, then um, that will be, be a new person. So, um, prayer shawl group, I'll be getting back to people about a meeting this March. Um, usually we do Saturdays at a 9.30, one Saturday in the month, um, but I'll be emailing you guys about that. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We're going along with Helen's announcement about looking over um, applications as far as your new vicar. Uh, you have, you have prayer book to if you turn to page 818, if prayer number 13 for the election of a bishop or other minister. And so let's do this together, substituting vicar um, for this parish. Okay? Almighty God, give your brother a gift, look graciously upon your church, and so by the minds of those who shall choose a vicar for your entirety, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and enable us for our ministries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, uh, something unusual to me. I'm almost at kind a of loss for words. But I think that we must all feel compelled to be praying for the situation in Ukraine. And so I may be stumbling through this, but let us pray. Lord God, you are the God over all people in this world. We ask that you look with compassion and guidance and strength on your people in Ukraine. The women and children who are having to flee their country, hoping to be allowed into another bordering country that will receive them. And the tragedy of having to leave their loved ones, their husbands and fathers and brothers and sons, at home to fight for their independence. Lord, you are also God of the people of Russia. We ask that they rise up in support of their fellows in Ukraine calling for peace, for secession of fire towers, rain down upon us for people. We ask also that you inspire leaders of other countries throughout the world to come to the support of a free and democratic country, fighting for that freedom and for that democracy. We ask this all in the name of your beloved Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we have one prayer show for us. Lord, once again today, I ask you to bless this prayer show. Bless those who have created it and those to whom it may go to bring comfort and peace knowing that they are loved and that this yarn in a beautiful design will help them with that love. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And then I have a personal request for prayer that you join me in. Um, I, 
The only purple vestments I have of this beautiful chasuble, which now that I'm shorter in my old <laughs> age and I don't wear high heels, is too long for me, so I don't wear much. But it just had a very plain stole, no decoration at all on it. And um, I'm, I'm wearing your church's purple stole this morning, which is fine. Again, the chasuble is too long for me. Um, but I decided when our new rector was installed and we had a celebration in the ministry, um, the daughters of the king were the ones who presented him with a stole. And we bought him a green woven stole, um, since green is the color for the predominance of the year, all through the summer months and all. So, um, and the stole was out of a catalog, and this series of stoles is woven in Guatemala. Well, I will confess my lust for the stole. <laughs> and I thought, since I needed a purple stole, I would purchase one um, in their purple. And this is a type of weaving that was done by the people. Mm. And so um, I need to bless this stole before I can wear it. And so from the book of occasional services, I pray this prayer. You shall make holy garments for Aaron, for glory and for beauty. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. O oh God, you revealed your Son clothed in majesty and glory. Accept this stone for the use of the clergy of your church, that being clothed with humility as they minister to you, they may show forth his eternal splendor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to switch stone. Please try not to upset the microphone. <laughs> and I am not, by the way, being defrocked. <laughs> 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 And each of the liturgical colors uses a different mm -hmm. um, pattern of colors. It's also it was very interesting for the daughters to uh, when they saw that this was producing Guatemala because our chapter has a sister chapter in Bonanera, Guatemala. And so it had special meaning for us. I think she's working very well with that uh, white card. Yes, she is. She's doing fabulous. <laughs> and now I bid you walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs> For faith.
also with you. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
through the prayers for birthdays and anniversaries. <laughs> Are there any birthdays and anniversaries to be prayed for?
Lord, in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.